Hi, it's Father Barry. It's a daily word, and it's our devotions of the titles of God's Son and Savior and His names. It's the fifth day of the Christmas octave, and uh, it could be the celebration of Thomas Beckett. We certainly salute that saint, that English saint, that martyr. Uh, we're going to go with the regular readings of the day and the regular prayer for December 29th. Okay, so let us pray. Almighty and invisible God, who dispersed the darkness of this world by the coming of your light, look, we pray with serene countenance upon us that we may attain with fitting praise the greatness of the nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The scriptures will shorten it. It's a story of a uh, Simeon and Anna meeting the Holy Family in the temple. Uh, and if the parents of Jesus take him up to Jerusalem's temple for the presentation of the child and the blessing of the parents. So uh, we'll join in progress, Luke chapter two. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, uh, Simeon took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Now the child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And uh, you yourself a sword shall pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. So we have this uh, presentation story. So Jesus is now known by Simeon and Anna in the temple for who he is. Uh, this is the Holy Anointed One. And as they present him, uh, a couple of people are brought in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, into the temple, and they have this recognition. And so Simeon says, My eyes have, have seen the salvation right now before the people. My own sight and he is the light to the nations. He is the glory of Israel. Wonderful salute and some more titles again. Uh, more titles to Jesus. And Mary and Joseph are amazed. And then he says, this child also is uh, for the fall and rising of many. A sign will be convicted. And through him, all thoughts and hearts and lives will be made bare before him because he is the truth. And, and Mary bears her own sorrow uh, through this uh, prophecy. It says that he professes what she'll feel at the cross. So there's something about the Lord will split time, and he does. B.C. and A.D. are split by the coming of the Lord Jesus. In our Christmas octave, on this day, Tuesday the 29th, we pray and meditate upon the name and title of God's Son and Savior, a rather popular one for Christmas. And it is the Word, the Word, especially as John's Christmas story spends the first 14 verses of the good news, celebrating the word. And then in John's epistle, in its first chapter as well, and the first three verses again, the word. So let's start with John's gospel. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Well, this title, The Word, goes back to Genesis. And where all things begin, 
pre-existing that is the Word, who is God. Luke likes to call the Word the Logos, and appearing appealing to uh, his Gentile audience. John is writing to <clears throat> Jews and Gentiles and anyone around the world, but he is saying uh, it's a recreation for the Word who is with God, who is in the beginning. It says all things that came into being through him. Without him, nothing came into being. Well, he's come. He's come. The Word has revealed himself into humanity. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overcome it, knowing the, uh, the resistance that Jesus' ministry will have. The darkness did not overcome it. He was in the world, but the world that was came into being through him did not know him. That's how strangers, how much are we were strangers to God, not recognize him when he came. You could say he came in somewhat of a disguise of a child. But it does say his own people, some of them, received him, believed in his name. Interesting, it says his name. So all this time we were talking about names and titles of the Lord and so it's very important to believe in his name, isn't it? To all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. So that's you and I. As we go through this exercise, we, we go through a meditation every day from Advent into Christmas, wanting to love the name and love all the names of our Lord, but <clears throat> to love Jesus. And it says we can be born of God. And so how does it all get manifested? John 1.14, one of the great Bible verses there is. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of, his, of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. You know, it's a prayer this time of the year where you pray the three Hail Marys and, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us is part of that prayer. Do you know that prayer? And do you bow your head when you say that phrase and the Word became flesh? Well, we do at Christmas. We bow down when we hear that gospel. When the Gospel of John proclaims this, the Word became flesh and lived among us. It is stating that the fullest and most complete revelation of God occurred in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. Throughout the scriptures, the communication of God to his people is called his Word to them. God's Word is the revelation of God's presence and will. This Word spoken through the Old Testament is a reflection of the Word who is the fullness of God. The Word was God. John 1.1 1, 1. This Word from the beginning, before God began His creative work, well, through this Word came all things into existence. John's prologue, which is section of John is called, tells us that the awesome Word who is divine and eternal, became flesh. You know, to not acknowledge God as come in the flesh is to right away depart from Christianity. A lot of, of, the, of the early heresies and uh, groups that broke away from Christianity, they did not acknowledge Jesus in the flesh. Read the epistles of John and you'll see how it's a big deal. In fact, the epistle, 1 John 1, starts off with, We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, or eyewitnesses, what we have looked at and touched with our hands. Concerning the word of life, this life was revealed, 
and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us, Jesus Christ. Manifestation of God was both humble, uh, you know, the human Jesus, as well as the enfleshed divine word, uh, divinity come among us. Jesus walked the streets of our world, and yet he's also the same one, the word that's in the book of Revelation. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name, this Lord of the armies, is called the Word of God, of Revelations 19.13. Um, in the Psalms, it says, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. So the word is full of power. And yet, in Christmas, God's word is complete and perfect in Jesus Christ, full of grace and truth, it says in John 1, 14. God has communicated to us what is most important and revealed his deepest self to us in Jesus Christ. And we're celebrating Christmas because that's what it's all about. Merry Christmas to you. So from my home to yours.